I want to welcome in the executive director for the American Center for Law and Justice, Jordan Seculo. Jordan, good to see you. Thanks, Rob. Good to see you. Lots to talk about. So Trump claims this is a violation of his uh, Eighth Amendment rights, which protects citizens from being subjected to excessive fines. Basically, the exact language is um, citizens will not be required nor imposed cruel or unusual punishments. Does this, does something like $355 million qualify here? It certainly could, and I think that's why the appeal will be very important. But in New York, Rob, you've got two unique things. To appeal the case, you've got to post the bond. So you've got to post the bond means you've got to put up about $19 million just to secure it. That's you're not going to get back from the bond company. So that's $19 million right there, plus uh, $400 million or so in a mix of cash and assets. Then, and only then, can you appeal the case to the appellate division in New York and ultimately to the, uh, the, the highest court in the New York State, which is the Court of Appeals, to look at some of those issues about the excessiveness here of this very unique New York law, which a lot of businesses now are taking note of, that you can pay back your loans. You can have no issue with, your, with those companies. They've never brought suit against him for not paying his loans. He's paid them back on time. They testified to that. But if uh, New York still feels like you shouldn't have gotten that loan, you can be penalized by the state of New York. So, and th that's very unique that the loan, the people that actually loaned you the money are not the ones complaining about you paying it back. In fact, you followed all those rules, but you can actually violate this law because New York doesn't think you should have gotten that loan in the first place. Yeah, do you think the court grants this 30-day extension? I mean, isn't that pretty standard stuff, especially when the court's asking for almost a half billion dollars in cash? Uh, most billionaires, I mean, I I'm not assuming right. that they have that kind of money just sitting in their checking accounts. They're probably billionaires because that money is invested or tied up in other ways. Right. I mean, I think President Trump testified under oath. He's got about $400 million in cash. Most, again, is tied up in billions of dollars of real estate. He's now got this person uh, that is not a receiver, but is a monitor. So uh, certainly, if this wasn't Donald Trump, Rob, I think the 30-day extension would, we wouldn't even have to really ask that question. It would be granted. But this is Donald Trump in a very hostile court environment, court environment in New York State. And I think uh, anything goes. Right now, he's got about 25 days to post that bond before the attorney general, uh, uh, Tish James, could begin to uh, attempt to seize an asset. Yeah, which is a whole other process. Um, and by the way, $355 million, do you think, just based on what the Eighth Amendment says, the language of the Eighth Amendment, do you think that's excessive, even though Trump is worth a lot of money? Yeah, I think it's excessive based on the fact that he's paid back the loans, so he's harmed no private companies. Right. Uh, he's paying his, uh, in, you know, the state taxes. He's employing thousands of people in New York. This was an attorney general who ran on getting Trump, and she found this provision that was unique to New York that you don't have to worry about all of that. You can have all the testimony you want there. We can still think you weren't correct in what you filed, as if, and President Trump said, these banks don't do their own due diligence before loaning you out hundreds of millions of dollars. Like, they're just going to take your word for it. They don't do that at, at major banks, and they have never done that with President Trump. He hasn't had issues with that. So, uh, again, I think it is an issue that could be raised later in the case. The question right now, the rush to, to this matter, is getting this bond yeah. set uh, so that he can appeal the case and fight those battles. That's right. what's most important. I want to go to Georgia now, Jordan. It's been a week since Fannie Willis and her boyfriend, Nathan Wade, testified last Thursday. Yeah. The judge said he could rule as early as Monday as to whether or not Willis and Wade can stay on the case. How do you think this plays out? You know, I think it was a very bizarre, right? I mean, I think always the further you get from the actual, uh, those hearings, it, it gets less to predict because that's not necessarily as fresh in the mind. It's a serious decision by a judge even if they feel like there was a bad performance by uh, uh, DA Fannie Willis to actually remove her entire office from this case, restarting the entire trial okay. and putting a new day in that a new DA in that position. But ultimately, what do I believe? She's totally compromised in this case for a number of reasons. Her political work, like Letitia James, running to do this to Donald Trump, and of course the the personal relationship, the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and all this cash talk. It just doesn't seem 
right that she is in charge of this prosecution. And a new DA, which can be appointed in Georgia, should take a look at it, Rob, to decide whether or not this entire RICO fiasco right. should continue one step further. Let me just quick, Jordan, about 15 seconds for the response. But judges, we know that judges are randomly assigned. This judge, Scott McCaffrey, he's been on the bench now for almost a year, just under a year. He's running for another four-year term on the bench. The election is in May. He's running in Fulton County where Fannie is district attorney. How is there not a conflict of interest here? Yeah, I mean, this, again, if you saw some of the defense attorneys uh, that, that we know and work with, uh, even uh, for President Trump, they have to be very cautious here because she's the district attorney uh, that you're going to be working with. And, and of course, with uh, McCaffrey, he was appointed uh, by a Republican governor, but he does have to run for retention in this seat. So politics, it comes into play when you have these uh, these uh, elected judges, even if they do or don't have an R by their name. But I trust that he's going to actually just make the best decision possible. Obviously, he's a young judge to take a case on like this. Right. But uh, I, again, I think there's a, there's a good chance that Fannie Willis has really messed up here and is taken off this case and the entire case crumbles. Uh, it's not 100 percent, but I don't think anyone would be surprised at this point that that case is, uh, is crumbling. Well, it is crumbling, making yeah. it more difficult and it totally could be uh, dismissed by a new DA. We'll find out on Monday. That's when we could get a ruling on this. Jordan Seculo, appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. All right.